Brought to you by Almond Auctions, the worldwide leader in antique tractor auctions. People with garden tractor fever will do all kinds of things and go all kinds of places to find the tractor they want. David Smith from Oklahoma, you brought your tractor 900 miles to a tractor show. What'd you do that for? Oh, we've always saw this in the magazines and on TV, and it's just something we wanted to do. And we finally got it all together this year and was able to do it. I know you brought a couple of tractors. We've got one sitting right here. Tell us about it. This is a 1949 Gibson Model D. Got a few modifications, They're not the right kind of fenders, but they're fenders nonetheless. The exhaust has changed, and I didn't like the color scheme, so I painted it my own color. <laughs> but they, basically, it's a, an original tractor other than that. The motor's been rebuilt, and everything was either tightened up or replaced, you know, drilled and tightened up. But as far as changing anything, we did. It's all the original parts. Okay. Tell us a little bit about that engine. It's a AEH Wisconsin and I suppose they're supposed to be in the six to eight horsepower range. I've never seen the book on a Wisconsin, so I don't know. Uh, it's reliable and they're pretty good leakers. You gotta keep wiping up behind them all the time, but I've got a, had real good luck with this one. So back in 1949, the Gibson Company built these tractors. What do you know about them? Just what I've read and been told uh, after the war, everybody that could manufacture anything was manufacturing tractors to send over overseas. Nobody had anything to plant with. And I've got some pictures of these on a rail car where they're shipping rail car loads of them to England. And I think that was their major market was to get them to help rebuild England and get them back on their feet. Handy little tractor for a, a garden or that kind of thing, huh? Yes, they're pretty unhandy to run in a close quarters, but it, it you know, beats a hoe or, or walk and plow. <laughs> Tell us about some of the features, a uh, little bit about uh, how many speeds forward and that kind of thing and what you could do with a tractor like this. Well, three speeds forward and one reverse. Uh, it's got steering brakes, independent foot operated brakes, a pedal clutch. The Probably the biggest drawback is the steering because you've got to stay with the tiller steering all the time. But they had a little bit larger tires than most of them. They were probably better, better suited to pull, better traction than most little tractors. But other than that, they're just basically a small tractor. <laughs> I was going to mention you're missing the steering wheel on this tractor, but it is a tiller steer. How is that to work with the tiller steering? Oh, it's, it's easy to learn. It's just like the old bass boat used to be. It's, it's real simple to get the hang of and I've never had one with the steering, so I can't compare them to anything. All the Gibsons I've got are tiller steers. You think they were saving money by doing it that way, or what, what was the idea behind that? Simplification. I think everything was so simple to put together that way over a steering box and getting it off to one side of the motor. I feel like the, the tiller was a cheap, quick way to put one together. The other levers on it, one is for the hitch in the back, the other one runs the dozer blade or a uh, sickle mower if you had one attached to it on the front. Well, you're pretty busy if you're plowing and trying to get your plow out of the ground and steer it too. <laughs> <laughs> and you have outfitted this one a little bit uh, with a, a front blade. Is that from back in the day or tell me about that? It was the original equipment. Uh, they did upgrade them in years to come. You could get an angle and then you could get a tilt in an angle, but they stick out so far that they're always in the way at the show, so I've just left this one single mounted blade on it to kind of show what it looked like. But I do have the angle and tilt blades for the other tractors. They're just too clumsy to haul around. You brought it a long way to the show. Uh, tell me what your favorite thing about the Gibson uh, tractor is. Probably it's scarcity or rarity. You just don't see that many, and especially in our part of the country, this is about the only tractor we see in five or six shows we attend in Oklahoma. So I noticed that you don't really have a key start like a lot of people are used to on a tractor. Tell us how this tractor starts. It's rope start, like the old lawn mowers or old rototillers. It's two or three wraps with a rope and a really firm jerk. <laughs> <laughs> and hope everything's set right, throttle and the choke. It's unhandy to start in an enclosed space, but out in the wide open, it's not bad. And do you ever lose that rope? 
No, we can't take real good care of that rope. <laughs> so you better not, right? No, it hangs right in the same place every time. Now you mentioned your grandkids have gotten involved with this. Uh, do you feel like that's important to kind of share this with them and let them know a little bit about the history of, of these kind of machines? I did because it was something we could do together after school, occupied some of their free time. They learned to, hopefully they learned a few things and they've enjoyed driving them in the parades. And Kids seem to like tractors, don't they? You bet. Anything that makes noise and unusual, they seem to flock to. We've had real good luck with our boys showing them in the parades and going to the shows with us, so maybe it was worth something. <laughs> All right, David, keep it going strong, will you? All right, sir. Thank you. All right, David Smith from Oklahoma. He's connecting generations with classic garden tractors. It's a good way to go.